Tip number one is to pat dry your steak. And whether you have a bone in ribeye from Frankie's free range meat or just a regular steak from the supermarket, it's going to come in a bunch of liquid, whether it's a lot or a little, that's going to compromise the sear on the steak. As you can imagine, if this goes on a hot grill or in a hot pan, the liquid has to evaporate off and in most cases is actually going to steam the meat, making it far more difficult to caramelize the crust. And you could pat this dry with a towel or you could leave it on a rack overnight in the fridge. And this is actually a great combination with our next step. Our next step being to season our steak ahead of time. And for each inch of meat, you want at least an hour in advance. In most cases, it's only an hour because you know, most people aren't grilling a crazy thick ribeye. In this case, we want to get all sides of the steak so that the salt can adequately penetrate the meat. And every time I do this, I forget why I wasn't doing it in the first place because it literally magnifies the flavor of the meat like 40, 50% compared to just salting it before you cook it. So whether you're doing this an hour before cooking, the night before, and you could even do this multiple times. You could salt this you know, 24 hours before, then an hour before, and you're just layering salt into flavors of the steak. Tip number three is to make sure your meat, steak, burger, whatever you're grilling or cooking has plenty of fat on the outside. In this case, we're fine. We don't really have to add more because when you put this on a hot surface, this fat's going to render, it's going to caramelize the outside. The fat is what is physically caramelizing the outside. If there's no fat on the steak, it's not going to turn brown. So in some cases with a lean cut, chicken breast, filet mignon tenderloin, or a leaner ribeye, you wanna use a neutral oil that's low omega-6. Some Wagyu beef tallow would be a great option. Any animal fat, ghee, clarified butter is great. And just get a nice, layer on the outside. And then when you're actually cooking and grilling this steak, you can continue to baste it with more fat if necessary. But for something this fatty and delicious, it's a little bit overkill. Tip number four is to temper your steak. And what I mean by that is based on the thickness and what temperature you wanna cook this to, you either leave it in the fridge or take it out of the fridge. In the case of a thicker ribeye like this, you would likely want to leave it at room temperature for an hour or two so that it cooks through fairly quickly. If you have a very, very thin steak, then you might even wanna keep it frozen as cold as possible so the inside doesn't cook too quickly. Tip number five is making sure your cooking surface is hot enough. If you put that meat on the grill or in the pan and you don't hear an immediate sizzle, take it out, let the pan heat up, don't be lazy, don't leave it in there hoping it's gonna cook because you might just steam the outside and never get that proper caramelized crust. Thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully these five quick tips will make your grilling, especially Memorial Day, that much more enjoyable for your friends and your family. If you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube unsubscribes you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank-stefano.com, support me through all of my businesses. We have all of that stuff you saw on Frankie's Range Meat, those delicious and <laughs> way too underpriced bone and ribeyes. The salt is back, and of course we have the cooking fats. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow.